This week's SOS isn't very structured. It's not very well planned, but I feel it's an important one. I want you to know that although shouting out scripture against the lies in our head is important and it's powerful, it doesn't always fix things just like that. We are in a battle and this battle goes on day after day. And sometimes we're battling in that same place for what feels like a very long time. Sometimes we think that we've won the battle and it turns out we've just gotten a reprieve and somehow the enemy rears his ugly head over the same thing and the same place and we have to fight it all over again. I say all this to tell you this. <laughs> I am still struggling with that same thing that I shared with you a couple of weeks ago. And time and again, I've thought, okay, God, I get what you're trying to show me here. I get what you're saying. I've shouted out scripture. I've cried. I've prayed. I've prayed. I've asked trusted individuals to pray and I thought okay I'm good and then there it is again and that's what I've been going through and I need to share that with you because I know I know that each of you will go through those times as well where you think really God I have forgiven, I've worked through it, why is it still there? And that's what, where I'm at today. Part of the reason is because I've found out recently that other people have been told these hurtful things. It's not enough that somebody I love thinks something bad of me. It's that this person has then turned around and, and said these things to other people I care about and now they think these things of me. One of the ways that God's been helping me through it is to remind me that, you know, the people that really love you and know you, they know the truth. They know the truth. And he's been reminding me time and again that he knows the truth and that that needs to be enough. What he thinks of me has to be enough. But it still hurts. We still have to work through the pain and receive the healing. Healing is often a process, right? Just like when, when we wound ourselves physically, sometimes it takes time to heal. And sometimes inner wounds take time as well. And it doesn't mean that God's not doing the work. It just means it takes time. But the one thing that God has really been laying on my heart lately that I want to share with you now is that there are times when the enemy is attacking us, when we're going through things and, and it, we don't win the battle right away. There are times when we, we absolutely just can't remember scripture offhand. But one of the things that we, we can know is the heart of what God teaches us in his word and that is to love God and to love others that's the heart of it all so even in my pain and frustration even in the process even in the battle I know that God wants me to love and trust him and to love others even those that are hurting me especially those that are hurting me. One of the ways to do that is to forgive. I believe C.S. Lewis is the one that said, forgive the inexcusable in others because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. And he really has. And when we know, when we know with our, all our hearts just how much God has forgiven us, it makes it easier to forgive others. 
And how did God forgive us? He wants us to forgive others the way he has forgiven us. That's what Jesus tells us to do. How is that? Well, he forgave us before we even sinned, actually. He forgave us before we asked for it. He forgave us unconditionally, and he forgave us for everything we would ever, ever say, think, and do that would hurt him. He never stops. And that's how he wants us to forgive others. 70 times seven, Jesus told Peter. It just means that's not a mathematical equation. It means there's no limit. It means we don't wait for the person to come groveling and beg our forgiveness. It means we don't just forgive, well, I'll forgive this, but you know, if you keep doing it, I'm not gonna keep forgiving you. That's not how God has forgiven us. We forgive freely. We forgive fully. We forgive without reservation. And we need to do that even if the person doesn't come to us and doesn't ever realize that they've done wrong. And I've heard people say, oh, you don't forgive other people for them, you forgive them for you. Well, no, forgiveness is an act of love. If you're only forgiving them for your own good feelings, then that's selfish, that's not love. Yes, we need to forgive others for our own peace and out of our own obedience to Christ and to keep ourselves in a right relationship with God, but we do forgive other people for them as well because it shows the unconditional love of Christ. And that might be the only way that they see it. God forgave us in Christ before we were sorry, before we even knew we'd done wrong. And he expects us to do the same. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for each and every person that would hear or watch this message, that you would do a mighty work in their hearts, a work of healing, and forgiveness. Help them to understand just how much you've forgiven them and how much it cost you to do so. And give them a heart that fully and freely forgives those who have hurt them. Not that they need to go back and be a doormat and allow that person to continue to hurt them or live in a toxic relationship, but that they would fully and freely forgive with a heart of love that prays for that person and places them in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll see you next week. God bless.